This is the day, the only show that keeps you company as you drive home, gives you an opportunity to share what you've gone through during the day, and keeps you up to date with news info from all counties and around the world. This, this is the day. This is the day. Hello and welcome to This is the Day. My name is Harriet Kinga and today I have a guest in studio. Her name is Dr. Rasha Kellett, CEO of Mark Foundation. And today we're talking about infertility. Yeah, and the misconceptions about it here in Africa. Welcome, Dr. Ari. Thank you very much. Yes. yes I'm and very happy to be here. I know, and this is something we, that is very interesting and a topic that people shy away from. Yes, yeah. definitely. Yeah. I mean, in many cultures, as you know, uh, infertile, uh, specifically infertile women, are suffers, uh, you know, suffer uh, discrimination, mm -hmm. ostracism, violence, physically and psychologically, mm -hmm. and always be the one who blame to be infertile. Mm -hmm. While uh, if you know that 50% mm -hmm. of infertility causes due to male mm -hmm. factor, so mm -hmm. men are responsible for infertility mm -hmm. as much as women. So I they like have that. to share that. I like the yeah, that share made. responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but before we get to who is responsible and who is affected, yes. what are the causes? Oh, uh, I mean, there is uh, too many causes, but uh, if you know that 85% of the infertility causes are due to inf untreated infectious diseases. Mm -hmm. Infectious diseases uh, due to uh, unsafe abortion, unsafe delivery, mm -hmm. STDs, or genital mutation, mm -hmm. or uh, uh, child marriage. Mm -hmm. So all the practices we are advocating against every day mm -hmm. uh, uh, can be actually a complication for it, can be the infertility. Mm -hmm. So prevention, prevention is very, very important mm -hmm. to eliminate a high number of infertility mm -hmm. uh, in uh, Africa and developing countries. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all right. And then, does does it affect? Is it affected by age? Does it matter what age you are? Uh, no, I mean, uh, you know, the productive age is uh, uh, from a certain productive age as up to the menopause, and and after that, of course, uh, there is no production of uh, follicles. Yeah. But uh, infectious diseases can affect uh, men and women. Yes. Uh, adolescents from uh, the age they, um, I mean, up to 14 mm -hmm. years old, they can have, uh, depends on the practicing uh, mm -hmm. sex. So, a uh, safe, uh, safe sex, practicing safe mm -hmm. sex is very important mm -hmm. for prevention of infertility as a complication of STDs yes. and also avoiding risky behavior. Mm -hmm. Wow. Definitely. Wow. So it's actually uh, very much aligned with all the awareness met, uh, awareness uh, uh, campaigns we do for HIV mm -hmm. and uh, infectious diseases, mm -hmm. STDs, mm -hmm. and also with advocacy with genital mutation, mm -hmm. child marriage, mm -hmm. because all these can cause inf uh, infection, mm -hmm. and this infection sometimes. Al many many times that not have uh, any symptoms mm -hmm. or cannot be diagnosed mm -hmm. so what happened is manifested in the reproductive health from very very early age yeah. and to the to the to the time when a woman or a man tried to have a family mm -hmm. and then it would be too late mm -hmm. because uh, uh, they lost the productive uh, system mm -hmm. uh, function mm -hmm. and things like PID they don't manifest in any way Inflammatory Definitely, don't, don't think, yes, 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 yes. Uh, well, infectious diseases can affect, uh, the, of course, uh, uh, pelvic uh, in fact, inflammatory diseases, yeah. and it can also it's a factor of the uh, uh, infertility. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. So when we start uh, avoiding or uh, preventing the STDs from the start, like chlamydia, syphilis, and other things, yeah will uh, very much uh, help uh, preventing infertility but also mm -hmm. uh, uh, there's a lot of other things can prevent inf infertility like uh, practicing um, uh, a healthy lifestyle yeah. uh, exercise regularly mm -hmm. uh, eat healthy diet mm -hmm. stop smoking mm -hmm. uh, limit alcohol intake all these things yeah. uh, avoid the exposure to toxin like paints uh, pesticides mm -hmm. uh, chemical exposure mm -hmm. all these things can affect infertility in men and women affect the sperm production mm -hmm. and and uh, follicle production as oh, well. Wow. Okay. And then talk about the effects of infertility. The effect of infertility? Yes, when it, when it starts from uh, the infection, then you end up being infertile. What are some of the things that just manifest apart from depression, of course? <laughs> of course, you yeah. know that culture uh, uh, perception and social perception of infertility. In many cultures, as I said, infertility is a stigma and a taboo. Mm -hmm. And uh, many, many people don't want even to share this information with the do doctors. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, men does not want to admit that they can be infertile, mm -hmm. while infertility has nothing to do with the manhood of a man. Yeah. Uh, uh, at all mm -hmm. okay or his sexuality mm -hmm. so uh, uh, so I encourage all the men to share uh, the responsibility
responsibility of their wives, support their wives, yeah. go and test uh, and get tested with their wives and share the journey of treatment mm -hmm. uh, because this is the only way to have a beautiful, happy family. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And then when, when you're talking about uh, infertility in Kenya, let's, mm -hmm. let's talk about it in Kenya. Is the Mark Foundation involved in this? And uh, are course. you also just uh, creating awareness and capacity? No, building? we have we have uh, many, many things we are doing for, uh, first of all, Merck More Than a Mother is yeah. a campaign we created and it's a historic campaign mm -hmm. because there is no uh, other uh, organization or uh, governmental or non-governmental organization approach this uh, uh, this uh, co uh, this uh, issue mm -hmm. uh, with this um, comprehensive way. Mm -hmm. So we, apart from raising awareness about infertility prevention mm -hmm. and uh, management, we also building capacity by sending uh, uh, doctors for training mm -hmm. uh, to be fertility specialists and embryologists. Yeah. Yeah. In many countries, not only in Kenya, there is many countries that don't have uh, uh, fertility uh, care at all. Mm -hmm. uh, we're making history there, like Sierra Leone, for example, and Liberia mm -hmm. and Gambia. Mm -hmm. We don't have the uh, infertility. We're sending the first, first infertility specialist, which uh, can help a lot of women and men yeah. and couples because uh, uh, sometimes uh, uh, there is very few cases, uh, many cases actually, mm -hmm. can be treated with a very, very small intervention. Yeah. But if you have the infertility, the fertility specialist uh, available, and of course, we're building capacity uh, advocacy by uh, uh, ch trying to change a culture mm -hmm. of uh, disrespecting yeah. and mistreating mm -hmm. the infertile women and consider her like uh, no value because simply because she cannot have a child, mm -hmm. which is not fair mm -hmm. and it's not correct. Mm -hmm. And we want to tell the community and raise awareness to gain the sympathy of the community and tolerance mm -hmm. for infertility. It's not a taboo, it's not a stigma. Mm -hmm. Exactly like we did with HIV a long yeah. time ago. Yeah. Now HIV is not a stigma anymore and people are getting tested, getting treated, treatment and they live and actually people die from diabetes and hypertension and not die from the mm, HIV. Yeah, true. So we won't reach this le uh, level of uh, breaking the stigma around infertility yeah. and infertile women mm. specifically. So far in Kenya, how, how far? Do you actually, it's a it's very good reception. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we had said that we want to even take it further mm. to different levels by uh, uh, taking the media as a very important and concrete partner in yeah. this campaign. Yeah. So we uh, created a recognition award, media recognition award mm -hmm. for Merck More Than a Mother. We inviting all the journalists, uh, either multimedia, uh, online, print, uh, radio, mm -hmm. to, uh, uh, bro uh, to propose their stories about infertility and infertile women mm -hmm. and uh, to augment the story so mm -hmm. we can make a change of, of the uh, community, as we said, and create culture shift. Mm -hmm. And the award will, be, uh, the, the applicants will be um, uh, screened by a scientific committee and yeah. uh, uh, consists of uh, uh, judges like uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Tom Shandy and uh, William Bike and uh, Mrs. Uh, Rene uh, from Capital FM and uh, Mrs. Uh, Carol Mendy. So uh, uh, all, uh, bless me. So we will judge the uh, awards and we have two categories for journalism who is already practicing and for the students, journalist students, because I know that young and youth you know, you we want to have this. You want to use this to create awareness using the media. Yes, because Some when you encourage them, before. they will go behind the award after that, beyond the award, okay. and they will take it for for further to their communities and their articles and media outlets. Definitely. Right. Right. Yeah. That is Dr. Rasha Kellej, and she's also the CEO and a, a CEO of the Mark Foundation, talking to us about infertility misconceptions about it here in Africa and what they're doing as well as a foundation just to create awareness we're talking about infertility and the misconceptions here in Africa and in studio I have dr. Rasha Keller she's also the CEO of Mark foundation talking to us about that and before we went uh, on a break when we to play music we talked about the effects the causes and also who does it affect most so men sometimes feel like no it's a woman's fault oh no it's the other way around well the doctor has said it 50%. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's not just a woman's problem. So as we continue now, let's talk about the rural areas. How do they get to hear about the information and what's happening? Yes. And how do they, you said you create uh, awareness and yes, capacity building, definitely. but are there things that are being done just to make sure that you get to different parts of the country? Definitely, definitely. Yeah, yeah. We actually, the main focus for us is the rural area. Yeah. Because uh, as, as we said, we're partnering with the media and the social media to yes. reach everywhere. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, the materials of awareness in all local languages. Mm -hmm. And of course, in each country we go, we have ambassadors. Yeah. Ambassadors who can have platforms in rural areas and different communities. Mm -hmm 
countries mm. and speak about it. Mm. And we usually we have uh, bl plus the first lady, for example, mm -hmm. uh, of the country, like uh, first lady of Sierra Leone, first lady of Central African Republic, mm -hmm. first lady of uh, Nigeria, all are ambassadors for Merck more than a mother in their own respective countries. Yeah. Plus ministers of health, with the minister of health of Uganda, mm -hmm. minister of health of Ethiopia, minister of health of Sierra Leone. So uh, above this, of course, we have our, uh, our campaigns in different rural areas and community. I actually go by myself. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I send my team mm -hmm. to uh, try to get the stories and uh, to amplify the stories to the community and mm -hmm. speak to the community to mm -hmm. change. Uh, I actually was there in Uganda, for example, two months ago. Yeah. And I, I, I we established like uh, small businesses for the infertile women who cannot be treated anymore. Yeah. Because you know that uh, if they can be treated, we are helping them to know how the management and treatment mm -hmm. and everything. Mm -hmm. But the, some of them are very old to get treated, mm -hmm. and some of them biologically condition the condition cannot be treated due to the uh, loss of their productive health function due yeah. to the untreated infectious disease since so long. Mm -hmm. So we do uh, a, a, a combine them or uh, a structure like small groups consist of these infertile women mm -hmm. and we establish for them small businesses, we train them how to manage their businesses. Mm -hmm. we done chicken farms, cow farms and restaurants and yeah. catering yeah. businesses. Yeah. And I already actually, with the Minister of Health of Uganda, we opened a chicken farm for one of the infertile women. Mm -hmm. Everyone can see it on our social media, oh, Merk right. More Than a Mother, Facebook and Twitter and you YouTube. And you see how the transformation of these women. Yeah. You cannot imagine how the transformation from desperate, uh, depressed, uh, feeling worthless women to being powerful, strong and happy mm -hmm. and actually dancing yeah. and uh, having their own income, being mm -hmm. independent, mm -hmm. the community uh, also uh, respects them. But again, I don't believe the community understand and realize that they are doing a big mistake. Yeah. Because I don't believe that people are evil. Yeah. No way. Yeah. Because when we speak to the community there in open session, with many, many, like hundreds of uh, people, men and women, mm -hmm. they actually told us, we didn't know that it's wrong. Yeah. We didn't know that we are hurting these women. Mm -hmm. Now we know. Now we are not going to do it. Yeah. Now you come and told us it's wrong mm -hmm. and incorrect. We are not going to do it anymore. Yeah. So, so actually, we need the media and everyone can reach to these little places mm -hmm. to tell people it's wrong, mm -hmm. it's not fair mm -hmm. to treat women uh, this way, or men, or not tolerate them because simply they cannot have birth, yeah. they cannot give birth, mm -hmm. they they have something wrong with one of organ on their body. Yeah. So, it must be something bigger than this. Yeah. Uh, than being only giving birth yeah and then with all these people on board you've talked about different yes. people from different countries what are they doing or what has been done to ensure that maybe there are clinics closer to um, the people in the rural areas is there anything that has been done in regards to look, that look i mean in every clinic mm -hmm. which is already there is a lot of clinics in the rural area which is uh, uh, to manage uh, basic uh, medicine yeah. we and there is also hiv programs mm -hmm. and maternal health and mother and child programs mm -hmm. so we in integrate all the awareness about infertility mm -hmm. prevention management and male infertility okay. in these uh, in st uh, uh, structures mm -hmm. And these people also have different uh, campaigns about cancer, yeah. diabetes, we integrate with it. Okay. Uh, so we don't co create a completely different uh, different infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So we are actually managing it. It was a very cost effective okay. way. Okay. And what are some of the perceptions people have about infertility? Now that oh you've God. actually gone down into the, 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 the root, root yes. itself, and then you've actually met these people, and some of them have actually said the thing that they they believed in before you change their perception. What are some of those things? They think that uh, being infertile is mean. It does mean uh, that uh, it's being cursed mm. or uh, witched mm -hmm. or bad. Uh, you know, giving oh, bad luck to uh, mm. to to actually they blame only women. Mm -hmm. There is no men infertility yeah, yeah. at all. Yeah. As they they they. Belief, to them, yes. yeah, their belief, there is no male infertility. So men, uh, women who has infertility, they are worthless, they are witches, they are cursed, they mm -hmm. don't have to accommodate with them or associate with them. Mm -hmm. They're not invited even to funerals. Mm -hmm. And some of them thinking that they are prostitutes because that's why they are infertile now because yeah. what they've done before marriage. Yeah, yeah. And many, many bad uh, perceptions, which is not correct, mm -hmm. actually, uh, at all. Because I believe that uh, they don't even know that who is the cause of infertility yeah. without, without going to the doctor. How do you know? Mm -hmm. 
So uh, uh, we encourage men to speak uh, openly and discuss their infertility mm. and tell them that it has nothing to do with their manhood mm. or sexuality. It's completely different because it can be having a very weak man, yeah. okay, uh, sexually, and, uh, and and he has many, many children. Mm. And the opposite yeah. there. Yeah. It, it has nothing to do with it. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, we've had cases where people um, are misdiagnosed. Yeah. Yes. They go together as a couple, and then you find that uh, the woman is told, no, you cannot give birth, you're the one with the issue or the problem, and the man is fine. Mm -hmm. And then later on, yes, the man passes on, or it was not, this is a true story, this yes, happened actually, definitely. the man passed Many on, them, yes. and when he did, she met someone else, and she got pregnant. So what happens that there's actually misdiagnosis is that the woman is the one who's checked half of the time and the men are never um they never go through this yes this rigorous that's why tests. we're doing this training because yeah. uh, uh, we have to actually develop also and define policies to regulate mm -hmm. uh, fertility care yeah. and to audit fertility care mm -hmm. because there is a lot of doctors can actually claim to have uh, to be able to treat uh, infertility and have the skills and capacity mm -hmm. but they are not yeah and this is will waste a lot of uh, time and effort and money mm -hmm. for the couples yeah so I'm very happy that the couple already went to the doctor yeah this is a good start mm -hmm. because he went to examine mm -hmm. but the doctor couldn't examine the, the, the both of them mm -hmm. so he came back to his perception and believe it's a woman yeah must be a woman mm -hmm. so he just uh, blamed her and uh, of course he had proven that it, is, it was wrong and uh, the woman could uh, have ch uh, children after yeah, the yeah. pathway of the husband so uh, that's why we are sending a lot of doctors uh, from different countries to training and to be specialized in fertility mm -hmm. care so to make sure that they can diagnose properly mm -hmm. they can treat properly they deliver the right messages as a prevention or awareness or management uh, they can advise both uh, both men and women husband and wife mm -hmm. about what they can do and the best options for them mm -hmm. and question would be uh, the training that they are going the doctors are going through right yes. now is it different from what they go through when they're doing gynecology is of course different? definitely definitely mm -hmm. it's how completely different, different. it's subspeciality how different is it it's a subspeciality mm -hmm. it's uh, when you are going Gynecologist, you study certain things, but when you want to specialize in one uh, topic like fertility, mm. uh, it's completely different study, and it has also practical part which mm. they need to practice. That's why I insist on in all the training within the doctors that it has to be practical training. Mm. So they have to see the uh, patients, yeah. they have to uh, uh, um, treat them by, by themselves. Yeah. We send them to places like India and Indonesia, where there's a lot of turnover of patients, mm. and they can do actually also IVF, mm -hmm. and they can do uh, uh, the technology and they can uh, diagnose and treat mm -hmm. practical training mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so it's different than the gynecology mm -hmm. uh, you need a further uh, specialty to be an infertility doctor okay definitely. So it's not what people actually the kind of um, treatment people get and they think they're going to get the right treatment that's maybe that's the reason as to why there's a lot of mistakes yes, uh, I mean I mean there is a lot of gynecologists and uh, maybe they have uh, proper training but we need that's why we need to regulate and audit this. So uh, before the doctor uh, put in his uh, uh, board in front of the clinic, that yeah. infertility specialist mm -hmm. needs to have the license from the Ministry of Health that he is really went through the training and the practices and all this to be an infertility doctor. Okay. If he is IVF uh, uh, specialist and have I IVF center, mm -hmm. uh, the Ministry of Health was auditing uh, parts. They need to see if the right equipment are there, yeah. if it is safe, if it is uh, 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 hygienic enough, if all these things need to be uh, done to a um, facilitate and uh, uh, ensure yeah. there is a uh, safe and cost-effective fertility care in place mm -hmm. in the country. Okay. Yeah. Another question would be, uh, they, they, they use the same test to determine no, the difference different between tests. the two? Different tests. Different tests. For each, uh, for, for men, different tests than women, mm -hmm. uh, of course, they're different tests. And the, the fertility specialists be trained, will always be trained to do both. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. All right. I'm Harriet Kinga. This is the day and of course today's topic infertility talking about the misconceptions also in Africa and how people perceive uh, women who are actually infertile. And is it a man issue as well? Well, Dr. Rasha Kellege, also CEO of Mac Foundation is talking to us about that and she's also mentioned things about causes and how you can also get misdiagnosed if you go to the wrong place and how right now they're just creating awareness and capacity building in different areas in the country as well as well as Africa just to make sure that everyone gets to find out what infertility is about what can be done and learn something out of that welcome back thank you
Now let's talk about um, secondary infertility. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mention that. Um, Harriet, uh, of course, uh, there is the primary infertility and secondary infertility. Yeah. Secondary yeah. infertility, which is infertility after having the first baby. Mm -hmm. So it uh, can be due to many things. Uh, one of them inf actually infection as yeah. well, mm -hmm. which is after the first uh, baby delivered mm -hmm. and unsafe delivery, mm -hmm. uh, uh, which can cause uh, infertility the second time. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't mean that when you have a child, it means that it's uh, still you're safe. Yeah, you're safe. <laughs> you still have to prevent. You have to always have regular checkup mm -hmm. to see what you can do for uh, for. Uh, for uh, if you want to have a second baby, mm -hmm. which we also advise everyone to have maximum two babies, yeah. because then I mean it will be balance uh, 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 and uh, I mean fa happy family. You mm -hmm. can afford to keep them mm -hmm. and 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 uh, ha guarantee for them a happy life. Mm -hmm. And you talked about uh, someone actually getting secondary uh, infertility from infections. Mm -hmm. Are there specific infections that? Definitely, definitely, if go untreated, will cause um, infertility. Uh, anything mm. reproductive health and, and uh, genet genital infection mm. or uh, or uh, reproductive health infection, mm -hmm. uh, testicle infection mm. or uh, genital infection, mm -hmm. this is part of the reproductive health. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, all the reproductive health, any infection in any part could mm -hmm. cause infertility mm -hmm. if it's not treated uh, early enough mm -hmm. uh, or caused any damage, uh, irreversible damage to the, um, the organs of the reproductive health. Yeah, definitely. yeah. The same thing applies also to men, right? I uh, definitely. Yeah. To men as well as men, <laughs> as women, uh, they can also be also uh, have infertility due to inf uh, infection mm -hmm. diseases, mm -hmm. which is not treated properly. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, Practicing safe sex and uh, avoiding risky behavior for mm -hmm. men and women, mm -hmm. uh, young and older, is very, very important, important. to avoid having infertility. Mm -hmm. It's All very right. important. Okay. And then you also talked about hormonal issues. Yes. In, in and this is, of men course, and some, some issues will be hormonal and mm -hmm. can be treated by hormonal uh, um, therapy. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's why it's very important to uh, have a very good trained doctor who can manipulate these hormones in the body because it's not easy. Mm -hmm. it's very difficult mm -hmm. hormonal treatment in general in any diseases uh, or conditions is not easy it needs a very good uh, skilled doctor who knows how to change and increase and decrease mm -hmm. let's make us understand this if you have uh, um, an issue with your hormone hormone uh, imbalance hormonal imbalance yes. if someone has yes. it can actually cause infertility yes and uh, certain hormones can cause infertility like uh, something called bo follicle stimulating hormones mm -hmm. and uh, uh, which is responsible for the, the the development of the follicles which is can be a, a, a embryo at the end with mm -hmm. the sperm mm -hmm. or uh, something cause uh, the uh, sperm affect the sperm production mm -hmm. which can cause mutation to the sperm mm -hmm. or a uh, lose of motility of the sperm mm -hmm. all these can cause uh, um, uh, infertility because mm -hmm. it affects the natural uh, uh, intercourse uh, process mm -hmm. and can be treated definitely with mm -hmm. many methods and technologies mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and this question would be people have been told do not cycle so much especially men if you're in a boda boda or you cycle a lot if you work out or oh, be careful because that can cause infertility is, is that true it's just another misconception no it's it, true it's yeah. true it's true you can avoid cycling or uh, avoid also uh, temperature and high temperature like uh, uh, warm baths and hot baths for men and all this for men it can cause really infertility as well so mm -hmm. avoid these things will enhance in infertility infertility uh, what's the cause percentage? behind it what, I mean, there's the too many things behind? that will affect the sperm and the medium of the sperm mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of explanation, mm -hmm. which, uh, I mean, could affect uh, uh, the sperm production, motility mm -hmm. and uh, morphology mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. It's interesting when it comes to cycling because not, not, not so many people think that that can actually affect infertility. I yes. read about the Boda Boda story and the mm -hmm. men were saying, no, the association was saying, no, it doesn't affect but then other people say, doctors actually saying that, yes, it does affect. Yes, definitely, it does <laughs> affect, but I mean, sometimes you, do, you don't know what to do. That, like, for example, uh, chemical exposure, like yeah. pesticides, mm -hmm. when you are a farmer and you spraying pesticides, it also affects infertility. Mm -hmm. Exposure to chemical, uh, when you're working in a uh, chemical uh, factory or mm -hmm. uh, oil and gas uh, uh, factory mm -hmm. so, uh, or... Uh, uh, company it will also affect the infertility paints mm -hmm. the people who painting the smelling of the paint also affect the infertility just always you can read inhaling mm -hmm. yes definitely so only you can read about this when you say when you google uh, toxin or exposure to toxin and chemicals and infertility mm -hmm. 
will have all this. Yeah. And also, if you Google uh, ex- uh, uh, heat and uh, and cycling and infertility, all this information now available on Google and many many uh, uh, medical societies uh, websites. Mm-hmm. They advise what to do and what to avoid mm-hmm. and, and and many other things. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Yes. And then now, what are options that are there for for treatment? What options are there for for treatment? Uh, I will not speak about treatment because mm-hmm. uh, there is too many options. It takes a lot of time, and the more experts people than me to speak about it. That's mm-hmm. why I mean you need certain specific training to be mm-hmm. able to speak about these mm-hmm. things. But there is uh, uh, options that uh, depends on the stages of the infertility. Yeah. Uh, if you discovered early, if mm-hmm. you're still young, uh, below 35 or above 35 years old, it's easier uh, below 35 or below 30 even, and uh, more difficult above 35 years old, and you need high uh, technical uh, technology intervention. So there is too many options. Mm-hmm. Uh, you will need to see specialists, mm-hmm. infertility specialists, to understand what is your option after you having the certain diagnosis. For every diagnosis, there is an option, mm-hmm. one or two or three. Mm-hmm. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's there, it's there, all, all, everything is there, but okay. you need to know and you need to diagnose properly who is responsible, if it's you or your husband, yeah. uh, if it's you both together, because also there are certain that cases, they are you. both responsible as a chemistry, yeah. you know, uh, responsible for, they have to both have treatment, whether if he went to marry another one and she went to marry another one, they will have uh, children without any intervention, mm-hmm. but sometimes it's a combined intervention with these two particular couple mm-hmm. uh, men and women yeah and what is the success rate according to what you guys have um, seen it depends also again on, yeah. on the incidence and the stage uh, there the success rate is easier and higher much higher when she's ya- when they're younger, younger and 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 discover the uh, early diagnosis of infertility mm-hmm. of course the success rate is higher mm-hmm. it's getting difficult when it's older definitely because the follicles are less and less quality and, yeah yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and is that uh, like cases where a doctor can actually deny someone treatment because maybe from what you see there's no help can be can be gotten uh, there are cases that depends happen. on the doctor definitely yeah if he is uh, um, for example he's seen the case uh, cannot be treated mm. or he cannot do it uh, he will uh, tell them no we c- I don't want to save waste your time yeah. and, and money mm-hmm. and maybe they can send them to somewhere else where is uh, different technologies available mm-hmm. or more experienced people in this certain case yeah. are there yeah but many of the co- uh, cases can be uh, treated uh, by simple interventions mm-hmm. and easy mm-hmm. yeah. now let's talk about something that is interesting you talked about um, women actually being stigmatized in different parts of yes. the country even in Africa as well what are some of those cases that you've seen that are really really bad when it comes to women being um, ostracized because of the the fact that they are Yes, fertile. Yeah, yes. even from relatives. Oh my God, <laughs> there is a lot of cases and stories we heard, and you can even watch more and more in our YouTube, Merk Moza and a Mother, and yeah. website, mm-hmm. because we have the stories of the suffering of the women and what exactly they uh, they uh, uh, suffered um, psychological or uh, physical yeah. violence, like there, someone yeah. of the burns their ba- on their backs. There's uh, ladies as well, which uh, we don't have in the videos, uh, get their hands and legs chopped and uh, burned by acids because simply they cannot have children. Uh, some of them, uh, which uh, you will hear their stories, yeah. uh, they spend uh, nights and days without food, the price of food, and uh, there's no place to sleep and they sleep in the open air completely isolated from the community yeah. like a disease so uh, they don't even uh, uh, invited to, to funerals mm-hmm. sometimes mm-hmm. and they have nothing else to do because they cannot even go to their families mm-hmm. back to their families mm-hmm. because they cannot inherit anything because all the inheritance go to the brothers mm-hmm. yeah and uh, she cannot uh, have anything unless if she has children so she has nothing mm-hmm. no skill no education no support so uh, we actually met this women and I told you and we supported them by establishing small businesses we are also open for all kind of these women to apply for our uh, uh, website mm-hmm. my story at mercomozanamazar.com mm-hmm. so if they have anything we can help them to establish and train them to have independent and uh, a regular income mm-hmm. so they can they don't need anyone and they can be their own uh, person without any humiliation or acceptance any discrimination All right. so uh, this one thing of course uh, uh, when I went to Uganda also I've seen a man who uh, uh, said that he married 35 wives and uh, have no children and he doesn't know I mean, he must be cursed 
So he didn't even realize that he can have to go to the doctor mm -hmm. after the first, second, third, maybe. So uh, uh, and he keep only marrying another woman because he didn't know. Yeah. Genuinely, he didn't know that he can be the cause of infertility. Mm -hmm. He thought because she is the one who get pregnant in her body. She's right. the only one mm -hmm. who goes in for yeah, this. Yeah. When we told him this, he actually stood up and apologized for the community, apologized for his wife, the first wife who mm -hmm. uh, who, who, who actually married on love, mm -hmm. but he left her be and abused her because she didn't have children and he went to another one. And they told her that I want to come back to you and I will treat you like a queen. Mm -hmm. And it was really amazing. The community also, as I told you, stood up and they said, if we know that we are doing something wrong, we did not, we will not do yeah, it yeah. and we will change. Yeah. So, I feel like there's a lot, yes. a lot, a lot needs to be done when it comes to yes. this creating information awareness is very and, important. and giving out that information, yes. right? This is the day, and we're talking about infertility and the misconceptions in Africa and some of those options you have for treatment and also what can be done if you have an issue as well as just creating awareness and making sure that everyone gets to find out what infertility is about, how can you get treatment, what can be done and what options do you have. And in studio, as I continue with the discussion, uh, the Dr. Rasha Kelly is talking to us about that. And she's also the CEO <laughs> of Mark Foundation. And uh, Dr. Ari, before we, we actually wrap up the conversation, someone is asking, does the DNA of the surrogate affect the child Born. No, no. Mm -hmm. I mean the uh, the father and mother of the child yeah. uh, or the uh, embryo, which mm -hmm. is implanted in the surrogate mother, it's the DNA of these uh, uh, parents are the one who's, uh, I mean, in the in the child. The mm -hmm. surrogacy, the surrogate mother has nothing to do with the DNA of mm -hmm. the child. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Before we wrap up, you have there's something you're doing about the, with the Mark Foundation. What are you yes. in regards to infertility? Yes. So can you talk about that in in one minute? Okay, um, other than infertility, Merck Foundation also building uh, uh, capacity mm -hmm. in oncology mm -hmm. and we have oncology fellowship program which for infertility. Is not for infertility, mm -hmm. for oncology as well as infertility. Mm -hmm. So we are not only addressing infertility, we're also addressing cancer mm -hmm. access and diabetes and hypertension. Mm -hmm. So we're providing training and uh, uh, actually one year, two years, three years oncology fellowship programs for, for uh, doctors across Africa mm -hmm. and also for diabetes one year diploma mm -hmm. for diabetes and hypertension. For fertility, uh, I would like the, the last thing is to speak about the media award mm -hmm. which is very important to call for all the journalists across uh, 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 East Africa to apply their stories and has to be very moving and passionate stories about infertile women mm -hmm. and submit that at my story at mercmorethanamother.com mm -hmm. my story at mercmorethanamother.com mm -hmm. and also uh, read and watch all our videos at uh, www.mercmorethanamother.com mm -hmm. I think you will have a lot of uh, things to learn mm -hmm. and uh, any any question you can send there as well okay. on our social media all right thank you so much for coming to the studio thank you very much thank you so much for tuning in we do this again next week my name is harriet kinga this is the day and of course every week 6 to 7 p.m we talk about different different topics things to enlighten you and of course next week we do it big as well thank you for tuning in let's do this again next week god bless you